A very good morning. Thank you for joining us on your news and current affairs program, Politics Today, that comes live simultaneously on independent television and radio. Well, we look at a number, a number of issues that surrounds the polity and how to make it better. Uh, the whole issues about government functionaries wrapping their heads even in cabinet meetings is to ensure that uh, good governance uh, spread to the various parts of the country. And looking at the recent seemingly face-off between the Senate, the Eighth Assembly in that, and that of the, of, of the executive, the presidency, over the issues about bills, refusing to give assent on bills uh, by the president, and the uh, Senate making a threat, saying that they are going to go all out to override the president's veto. This issue is part of what we'll be discussing today. And also, we'll be taking a bite on the insecurity issues, basically in the northwest states of the country, looking at Zamfara, Casino states, the mining activities, the marching order given by the president for miners to vacate mining sites in Zamfara. And all of this, the Puff Adder, Operation Puff Adder, that has been launched uh, to ensure that the bandits, uh, kidnappers, cattle rustlers are dealt with. All of those will be what we'll be discussing, the crux of it all. And you know how it goes on this show. It's expected that as the program progresses, you lend in your voices on the program uh, by putting a call through to us on the numbers we'll be calling out. And uh, you ensure you civil in your presentation in that. I have distinguished personalities with me to discuss this program. But first, I'm your host, Philip Omoro Gupon. And from my immediate uh, left, I have the one-time uh, legal counsel to the former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshumole, and uh, he is also a constitutional lawyer and notary public, Adams Aliyu. Many thanks for coming, Adams. Good morning, Rivers. Thank you very much. And next to him, I have another legal practitioner, uh, custodian of the law, a uh, member of the National Economic uh, Council of the NBA, and also he was one time public relations officer of NBA Benin Branch. He is Eboseli Okifo. Many thanks for coming, Eboseli. Thank you, Philip, for having me. I hope I got that right. National yeah. Economic. Yeah, no, National Executive Council. Executive Council. Yeah. All right. NBA. Thank you for that. And uh, next to him, I also have an African director of uh, African Emancipation Movement and also the president of. Association for Educational Development Affairs. He is Osage God sent Erunse. Thank you for coming, Osage. Okay, Good morning, Dias. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming through on this. Uh, like we did say, we're going to be looking at this whole issues and uh, our distinguished personalities will be wrapping their heads around that. And also, uh, it's, it's expected that uh, you also uh, get to us by using the various social media platforms. You know how to reach us on www.facebook.com slash ITVRadioNG and also on our Twitter handle at ITVRadioNG. And as much as we get your comments, we also will bring it on board uh, so that we can intimate all of these issues uh, with the listeners on independent radio and, of course, our distinguished viewers on independent television. Uh, looking at this, starting right away, hitting the ground running like some politicians will say. <laughs> Now, Adam Salih, we've been having this whole drama between the executive, basically the president, and uh, the Senate. And recently, the whole issue about uh, refusing assent on the bills again sent to the president. Uh, all of this is really generating an issue over where the Senate has decided to uh, make a move to override the veto of the, the president's veto on this bills. What do you make of this? Is it in the interest of democracy? or good governance? Well, uh, as a constitutional lawyer, I see the issue as a constitutional one. Because the powers of the Senate, they are encapsulated in the Constitution, section 47 to 89, the do's, the don'ts, the modus vivendi. They are encapsulated in the Constitution. At times, there is misrepresentation of the issue. If you flash back to Margot's case in the FCC, the president is to appoint constitutionally, the Senate is to confirm. 
Three, four times Margot appeared before Shelley. Shelley did not confirm. But the president had appointed, and the person bears a prefix, Axi Chemayesis. And it's actually today. So if you play your constitutional role, you are to confirm, you did not confirm, the person will be called Axi. If you confirm, the person will remove the prefix Axi. In so fact, the issue on ground now, the president is reluctant, as it were, to sign some bills into law. The constitution provides for two-third majority of the senators to override the president. There are 109 senators. Mathematically speaking, you need 72 one-third senator to override and veto the president. But since a human being does not have one-third of a human being, we are approximate to the nearest number, 73. 73. Yeah. 73. So, and it is a Herculean task. To get that number. To get that number, 73 out of 109. By the time you are doing that, it is a resemblance of impeachment. impeachment. Tribalism will come in. Political party affiliation will come in. Religious will come in. You will never get 73 people, the required number, to advocate the president. Otherwise, the constitution is there. Uh, first reading, second reading, committee stage, these have passed through the complete metamorphosis, sent to the president, which ordinarily should be a fait accompli, uh, taking take it for granted as done. Mm. But when the president does not, it reverts back to the Senate that can use to turn majority. But it has been very difficult and it will be very difficult. Otherwise, the president is a respectable chamber. In the UK, it is called the upper house, a house of commons called the lower house. Here in Nigeria, it's called the red chambers. Many former governors gravitate back to senators. Very respectable, if I would call them distinguished senators. But here we are, they are trying to veto if they were. But I know that it is a political impossibility. Okay, thank you. In the overall, Ebosele Okifo, uh, we've had about 26 uh, bills sent to the president. And again, the president rejecting the, tw the 26 bills. Yes. Uh, and if, if we are to look at that, the, the two that comes to mind, where the Senate decided to uh, make a plan to override the president's veto, is the aspect where the bill seeking, mandatorily seeking, that uh, the governor or a president uh, should at least um, uh, lay the estimates of the annual budget uh, to the parliament three months to the end of a fiscal year. Yeah. Now, if you look at that, how important that is, and also what it tends to bring on board in terms of bringing uh, fiscal sanity to the budgets, uh, don't you think that that's a sensible thing for well, the president it, to give well, us? Well, it's unfortunate that the president has refused to assent to some of these bills. Just like uh, my learned friend here said, it, it's very, very unfortunate. And it's difficult for them now to veto the president by this two -third to majority, majority. We are talking about. This is where we actually have the problem in this country. In the sense that majority of those in the Senate, I, I, I would beg to say, are actually not representing the people as they ought to be. Because if you are representing the people, you should know, you should be able to come together. If it's a, a B that is supposed to be the overriding interest, supposed to be for the, the benefit, national interest, yes. Uh, national interest mm. that's supposed to be the benefit of the masses, yes. inclusive of the senators. Why will you not get a two-third majority to veto the president? Because they have not succeeded in vetoing the president, even just once. That is why the president will not, uh, the, the big beast to him, is, he, he, he feels reluctant to assent to them, and there's nothing they can really do about it. If the National Assembly, they come together, try to put their differences aside, and think about the generality of Nigerians, who, whose uh, interests those bees seek to protect, you understand? Mm. And they come together and have that subsidiary majority to third majority. The president will not just be uh, uh, reluctant to, to ascend to this beast because he will know that if he does not do that, mm -hmm. then so they will veto him and it becomes law. But like, on the, like, what, like, like, like what the president is trying here now, yes. the, the president of uh, America, of the United States of America, cannot try it in the U.S. because he knows that if he tries it, the, the, the Congress will just overrule him. 
by two thirds majority. But because here they know because of just like what my lawyer has said, tribal sentiment, political religion. sentiment, <laughs> so many things, religion, Trump, religion comes and into yeah. it. At the end of the day, to get that to third majority of one or nine senators an becomes a regular task. It, it becomes an issue where you say it's even easier for a camel's head to <laughs> pass through the eye of a needle for them to get that substitute members. Mm. It's really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. This is the result of when you have people in the National Assembly that are actually not representing the interests of the people. Okay. Where people are forced on, 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 on citizens, at the end of the day, they get there and they are dictated to. If somebody that is a senator, he knows that he's not a popular person, he was forced on the party by, by godfather or whatever, then before he takes any decision, he gets clearance from that godfather. He gets clearance from those that have made him. And it's not supposed to be so. When you are there as a senator in the Federal Republic, the interest of your, of, of your central district yeah, should be what should be uppermost in your mind. The interest of Nigeria should be what should be uppermost in your mind. So if by the time a B that say yes, we want to know how budgetary allocations are spent, let us know, and you are saying you will not assent to it, that is also what affected us during the elections. Yeah, when the, the, the electoral act was amended, the president refused to assent to it. They sent it to him not about one, two, three, four, five. He didn't do it, and that's why we had problems during the election. We, you had some instances where you had uh, the used card readers in some states, in some other states they never used card readers. That is why we, we are where, where we are. If okay. not those results that we're having dispute with, we would have not had those disputes because we would have, they would have calculated it electronically and we know as the voting is going on, you are known who is leading, you know who is taking the position or whatever. You understand? It's because of instances like this that gives rise to this kind of problems that we have in the country. Why would the president not assent to a bill that is supposed to be for the uh, overall benefit of Nigeria? Okay, there's, there, there seems to be a clog in the wheel of progress, uh, but where this clog is coming from, uh, we really can't uh, sit to it. But uh, looking at this whole issue, uh, Saige, God said, uh, the, both, arm, both arms, both sides are, seek, are seeking the national interest. But uh, looking at them, at these, what do you think? Uh, uh, what do you think the blame, or what side do you think the blame falls on? Uh, let me say on equivocally that what we need presently in this country is proactive leadership. If you are a leader, you have to be on ground. If you have any document you think you need to study before you are sent your you know agreement to, you have to be. Nigeria does not want a slow system. Because let me go a little bit um, down memory lane. If you look at this situation currently, you discover that it's not just starting. Before the election, apart from the electoral bill, there were other issues. The Senate had always been having issues with the presidency on assent of bills. Then if you are to ask these critical questions, yes. what are these bills meant for? You know, they are meant for the commoners. They are meant to improve the lot of the people. Oh, is it not also possible that there are technicalities that are not being put in place by the National Assembly, uh, whereby the president refused to assent? Don't also forget that before the Senate on Wednesday said they are going to vote to uh, the president, there was already a committee put in place, a technical committee, to look into these bills. I think headed by one Niger um, East uh, Senator, yes. Senator David also. Yeah, know, there, David. Was, there was a committee put in place to look into these bills. And that has been ongoing for months. They, it was upon the report of that committee. That they are that, taking this resolution. That they are taking this resolution. You know, what I keep on saying is laws are very critical or cardinal to a democratic society. So if you are, you know, millipeting and going in the steady, uh, slow, steady motion in terms of studying the laws before your table to knowing how you are sent to it or not, who suffers at the end of the day? The people. The people, the okay. commoners. But again, is it not the responsibility of the National Assembly to look at the reasons, technicalities, why the president is refusing us and commoners. try a way to uh, make these bills that committee more fleshy that. so that the president can yes, give us Yes, if assent. you look at the report of that committee, they actually did that. And according to the report of that committee, the, the reason being given by the presidency is watrish. It is not something substantial enough. It's not cogent. For him, it's not cogent enough for him to refuse assent to about 26 bills. And if you also look at that report, 
the Senate, or in their own wisdom, also decided to retrieve about six, four of those four, laws. Four of the bears. Four of those laws. You see, and this is where we are as a country. When our legal system is not moving, when our laws are not moving at a speed rate, it hinders development. Yes. And I think we begin, to, we have to begin to look at this. And one of the things I want to say to our honourable members is that it's about time we define the limits when it comes to partisanship in national issues. It's, it's about time. I, I, I will not argue or I will shy away from the fact that there is interest in politics. But what I've always said on this podium is, does our interest not have limitation? Because just look at what we are saying, for example, it will be difficult to get a civil theory to veto the president, not to override the president's veto. The president veto, not because of the lack of credibility of the law, but because of party allegiance Absolutely. and because of tribalism, religious religiousism. You will start seeing all kind of interpretation. You will start seeing party leaders calling their men in the uh, Senate and saying, no, you must not. What are we hiding? What are we protecting? A party or a nation? Mm. You know, when we have a people that lack a sense of nationhood, this is what a nation becomes. Like my colleague said, you can't do that in America. By the time the president veto has been override one, two, three times, uh -huh. he will be forced yes. to do the needful. Of course. He will be forced to make sure he looks at the issue quickly, as speedily as possible. Now, let me quickly hang on this way. You, if you study uh, this government, you will discover that one of the promises Mr. President gave us was to make sure he brings the national budget to the fiscal year to ensure that there is a compliance between January and December. Mm. Now the Senate have presented something that you promised Nigerians to say this is one of my pursuits, this is what I want to achieve. Mm. And you are refusing assentment. It doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of times what we debate over and struggle over in this country doesn't make sense. Because at the end of the day, we are where we are, things are not getting better, okay. and we are consoling ourselves about the deception okay, that you. we are not yet developed. Thank you. Adam Zaliu, I want you to look, it, uh, look at it from the side of the masses or the people, the Nigerians, that those bills would have helped if they were given assent by the president. Uh, don't you think the president uh, is, is, by this action, uh, uh, taking the nation backward? Well, it will be prejudicial, <laughs> presumptive, and anticipatory to think that because the president did not sign uh, the bills as it were, it is against the interest of Nigeria. Because the age sameness, the present sameness, they have a wrong interpretation of the constitution. The present age assembly. Age assembly, uh, assembly has. Right. But they think if they agree every time with the president, it is superfluous that if they disagree, it becomes obnoxious. As for what my contributing colleague talked about the Electoral Amendment Act, yes. Electoral Formula Sequence of Elections were sent to the Senate, putting presidential election first, first, as it used to be. The Senate, in its own wisdom, tried to rearrange the sequence of elections, wanting gubernatorial status of every to confess. Whereas the third schedule, section 14 and 15, specify unambiguously that IDEC has the power to undertake, organize, and supervise elections. In the whole of the Constitution, the power to organize fixed dates and modus operandi of election is never given to Senate. But Senate thought that it is their job to rearrange the sequence of the of election. And so when he sent to the president, he didn't get to it. I'm guided by constitutional provision. I make this undertake. They can bring the uh, House of Assembly election first. They have to undertake, supervise, and organize. Senate is to confirm and ratify. So, so you say the, 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 the Eighth Assembly has overshooting? Yes, yeah, very well. They have a wrong <laughs> interpretation of the Constitution. That is why when they make the conclusion that are unconstitutional or traveris, I will look, so use my times. binoculars to look at it okay. and remember. But the fact in issue this time around is for the assent of the electoral bill, which is common uh, procedure passing your bill into law as they have elected. Ordinarily, it's a fait accompli. First reading, second reading, third reading, committee stays, question and answer session, back to the president, he pushes it premature. Ordinary, certain is paribus. Okay. But this time around, it is not, and if he fails, the constitution provides 
Constitution has provided for them, for the Senate to attempt to veto. And let us see how they will get 73 out of 109 to veto the president. <laughs> Nigeria is predicated for many assumptions. The politicians there that are senators, they came from a constituency. They came from a religious background. They came from a tribal background. Because the Constitution is clear in Section 65. You cannot contest unless you belong to a political party. Right. There is no provision for independent candidates, as it was in the first republic. I just wake up as a professor. I go to any take form and contest. It's not allowed. They say you must belong to a political party. And you must be fielded by that party. Even Buhari himself, he wants to contest election, he will not go to INEC to take form. If we have to belong to a full party, INEC will write to that party to say, let us have the name of your candidate too. It is that party that will submit the name. The 91 political party have the power to submit the name. So these people came from a constituency. They cannot afford to do against the modus vivendi of that party. So in all of this, in summary, in all of this, uh, Adams, yeah. you seem to suggest that uh, the president is doing right uh, in putting the eight assembly within his boundaries yes, so that they don't the, overshoot. That is why there are provisions there he could assent to, he could refuse to. All right. And the alternative <laughs> is to advocate, which okay. is a Herculean task okay. to do. Okay. 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 Do you feel <laughs> safe? <laughs> I, I don't because if we, if we are to look at the bills well, on, the ground, on the ground, do you I feel safe? I don't entirely agree with my learned friend on that issue because first of all, if you feel the National Assembly or the, or the Senate mm -hmm. has no power to rearrange the election, how elections will be held and all that. Why send the bill to them in the first place? And even the aspect of the, of the, of the why, annual budget why, estimates. Why, why send it to them? If you, the, feel, if you feel they don't have a seat, why send it to them? For their information you know, and confirmation. Why send it to them? They're not only that. He said for their information and confirmation. The election is not for the uh, 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 not, not for their disagreement, for their information and confirmation. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that, first of all, just like you have said, they are not uh, members of the National Assembly, the Senate, or House of Reps. They are not there as a rubber stamp. In fact, uh, uh, we, are, we are talking about constitutional democracy. Mm. I remember our constitutional democracy, they are supposed to be separate. You understand? Now, the legislature is an independent mm. arm of government. Of just like the executive, who, who uh, Mr. Buhari represents, is an independent arm. The judiciary is also independent. So you cannot now uh, uh, deprive the legislature from uh, uh, functioning based on the functions that have been assigned to them under section uh, 44 to 87 of the mm -hmm. Constitution. You cannot they deprive them. Close. So you cannot just bring in a B and you say it's just for them to observe well, and they will not do anything and just return it. Pay. It's not done. Because that, that was why we have Otherwise, there won't be there won't be there for the house. House. It. 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 One, it. one, even that electoral we are talking about now that, yes, you don't have independent candidate. The amendment provided for that. For that. That, that was not we should have independent candidate. Was it passed? Yes. It was the best. <laughs> that is the problem. That is the reason why we are not the political party. That is the reason why we are not the political party. I agree. I agree. That is the, that is the situation of ground now. But <laughs> must we continue to uh, uh, be under that kind of situation if we can improve on it? Now, if you are popular in where you are, and you, and you, you feel you'll be able to succeed as an independent candidate, and the electoral had, had they wanted to amend, provided no provision for the The constitution can be amended. The constitution yeah. was amended to give, to give all labor matters uh, to industrial court. Mm -hmm. Industrial court, uh, employee, uh, mm -hmm. employer's uh, matter, matters. goes to industrial court. Before you go to federal high court, if you are working under the uh, federal agency, or you go to state high court, if you are under state uh, something, the constitution was amended. Mm -hmm. And now, if you are talking about a player, a player's uh, relationship, you go to industrial court, the high court and the federal high court, not last jurisdiction. Okay. You understand? So if the constitution can be amended to yes. correct that deficiency mm -hmm. in the constitution, why can't it be amended so that okay, independent, amended. independent candidates can also come in? Mm -hmm. So okay. because the, the, it, it, it will be unfair on Nigerians for the executive to continue to hold down bees. Mm -hmm. Bees that are supposed to improve the life of the people. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, like, like the aspect of the industrial development bill, yes, uh, which 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 is also a burning okay. issue. That's that can also help. You, you just said you just read my mind now because mm -hmm. in Ghana now they have even removed VAT for some of their important items and all that. They are trying to create an industrial base in Ghana mm -hmm. to provide. Now Ghana they have achieved. Yes, they, they have to enforce light now.
You understand? Now you just research gold. Before you know it, we'll start buying goods made in Ghana. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. because we have refused but, to but, 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 but obviously, 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 the president will be looking at the interest of the of the nation, and mm -hmm. so, uh, so don't you think it, 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 lies, it, lies, it lies on the assembly From to look at the technicalities, the issues that the president what is, what is so difficult? What? what is so difficult for the president's men? Even if the president cannot look at the B, uh -huh. he has people working on that. Him. He has people that are appointed. Mm -hmm. What what is wrong? Give those ones that point these technicalities we are talking yeah. about. Point it out. Then let Nigerians know. This is why the president has refused to ascend to this B mm -hmm. because of this, because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Then Nigerians will now say, ah, assembly, you put, try to modify this aspect of it. So but that, that is in public domain already. You understand? So yes. if you are not doing yeah. that and you just leave it for God's sake, twenty six Bs rejected. <laughs> Because we know that the National Assembly, because of the rule and divide tactics they are using, because we know that the National Assembly cannot uh, muster uh, 73 uh, to third majority of one mm -hmm. senator. But, but the president gave his reasons. The president gave his reasons. And the only reason is the position of the sections of the Constitution. It's cold dot. It's cold dot. It's cold dot. It's it's reasons are the reason why we are punishing Nigerians. That's the truth. It's punishing Nigerians. Because if those things come into effect, it will turn on you and I. You understand? Not of them. Even the senators that are there, they can decide to say, what, what's my business? Yeah, you understand? Business. At the end of the day. So we need to put the interest. What I'm saying is, that I'm not saying that the president could be totally wrong or the National Assembly are totally wrong. Of course, it's not a, it's not a fool. It's there to also represent an interest. Okay. But I'm saying that the utmost interest should be the interest of the masses. If okay. I say to this being, is it going to impact generally on the welfare of the people? And if the answer is in the affirmative, for God's sake, I say to it. In a couple of months' time, we'll be having the night assembly, uh, Osage God says. And we just hope that this whole drama that uh, engulfed the eighth assembly wouldn't engulf that of the night assembly. So looking at this override of the president's veto, and they drag the issues that are really coming up in terms of the clog on the wheel of progress of the nation, uh, what's your postulation or what do you see as the way forward for the Ninth Assembly to have a harmonious relationship with the executive? Um, anyway, uh, the Ninth Assembly, the ruling party is going to have it all. <laughs> so uh, I am not expecting uh, much in terms of rifle because there's something about partisanship that we must break in this country. If the ruling party has it all, is it not also in the interest of the country? Because no. it, after all, the, 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 the generality of Nigerians gave their votes to the See, ruling party. If you look at, let me just say this briefly. If you, if you go down history, you notice that one of the um, insinuation from the strike that have been between the presidency and this eight assembly is that there seems to be a set of people that are trying to discredit each other. Yes. The hate assembly want to discredit the presidency. Why okay. the presidency want to discredit the hate assembly? Which is not helping the country. Which is not helping the country, not minding how it affects the commerce. That was what we call the blame game theory. That, that is the blame game theory. That's my problem. That's well, the reason well, why I'm saying well, that. Well, fight. Thank you, sir. It's not, it's not enough to say there are reasons. Are those reasons substantial? You know, with all due respect to our erudite lawyer, how can you talk about the bill that was sent to the presidency for four good times? And even the current presidents of the Eighth Assembly said it several occasions before the election that the different um, uh, suggestions and amendments that the president, presidency suggested, they try to play to it. They gave the presidency that honor by assenting to all the, um, uh, quite a number yes, of the corrections. Mm. Yet, he refused to assent it. I mean, the issue about the electoral law is not only about the issue of scheduling uh, election yeah, sure, Yes. There are other things that are there. Yes. It you know, so candidate. you want to begin to ask, what is the credibility, the quality, and the sincerity of the people that represent us? Because it is glaring. Even a blind man can see it. There are reasons, there are reasons. This is why we are where we are. Do you know how many companies have left Nigeria to Ghana? Currently, a small Ghana can provide light for 24 hours. Yes. We are still groping under that. small, in quotes. In yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> what I mean is someone is still going to come and say there are reasons, there are reasons. Are we going to continue like this forever? What are laws? Laws are there to help the system, to create a healthy system. What is the evil in trying to make sure both the presidency and the governors of different states align to the one-year plan? Have you ever studied 
on why our budget fails yearly, why it is not successfully implemented. implemented. As part of review, that one of the reasons is because of delay passage. Yes. Now, what is the evil if a Senate chamber comes up to say, let's try to make sure we regularize, and which is one of the promise of this government? What is the evil in an electoral law to ensure that we have a credible election that the international community can attest to? And that is one of the things that give credence to any government. You know, I may not be a lawyer, but I know that the president has a right to scrutinize and analyze. But for how long? How long? When you keep on keeping the country in the dark for endless months in the name of your still study. That's the reason why I said what we need in this country is proactive leadership. We cannot continue to dilly dally, to move here and there. We must call a spade a spade. You know, for me, I don't think the eight national uh, assembly are overshooting their boundaries. I think we have a presidency that is not proactive. We need to be more proactive and up to the task. Thank you. In case, you're just, in case you're just watching us as politics today, and I've been discussing with uh, personalities, uh, Adam Saliu, a constitutional lawyer, not a Republic of Nigeria, and of course another legal practitioner, Ebu Sele Okifo, erudite and articulate, and also another erudite and articulate uh, gentleman who is an educationist, uh, Osage Godsent Erunse. All of this is on the issue about uh, Buhari versus Senate. Uh, overriding the president's veto on that and is it helping the country is it helping is it in national interest but uh, before we lend our voices uh, well before the listeners and viewers lend their voices on the program uh, we suspected that you would be seeing the numbers that will be riding on the screen and uh, for our listeners on independent radio we will be calling out the number but that will be after now now let's look at the aspect you said, I think it pinches me, and I want to ask you this question again in respect of the functions of the National Assembly. You did say, uh, we need more clarity in that. You did say that their own is to, the, their responsibility is to be informed of what the executive wants to do, and then for their confirmation. Yes. Is that all about what national lawmakers no, there do? there are many things that are within the poor view of the service. If you want to appoint ambassadors, they must come to the Senate for clearance. If you want to appoint ministers, they must come for clearance. If the Senate refuses your candidature, you will not be an ambassador, you will not be a minister. They have that prerogative. Yes. But the fact is that they, that they have failed, some individuals have failed to realize the essence of constitutional democracy. Is it because they disagree no, 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 in, in some cases with the president? Do yes. you see disagreeing with the president as a failure because on the part? In a constitutional democracy, okay. the law is who be major, me not just us. Where there is majority, the minority ceases. Who be major, me not just us. So if there is majority, the minority should cease. And that is why when he alighted that during the night assembly, the majority party will take all. That is how to be, will be major, will not just that. A minority cannot have a say. It's like the outgoing one, when a minority, as it were, had become the Senate president. So if you have that in mind, that the majority will have its way, majority will have its way, minority can have its say, there'll be no problem. But from few senators, think that their individual intention and aspiration should prevail over one or nine senator, which cannot be, will be major, may not just that, that is the government. <laughs> Where the majority is, the minority ceases. As for the composition of the Senate, the powers are there, have highlighted ministerial... So, 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 so it's up to them to execute those powers? Yes, they are uh, execute those uh, ones. But you already, you, already, you already seem to tell us, you've already told us yes, that but other executing ones, it is uh, even difficult because no, they are not able to get it. Other ones, so that, that, that puts a hold on that ones progress. Other for their information okay. and cons confirmation. The evidences, instances, precedents are there. They refuse to confirm Mago. And Mago is working today as acting chairman. He only puts the preface AG before he remains 
You have not been the vote. President has not sat in. President has not appointed. And, 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 and if you because, ask, it's because they did not confirm him. The man is bearing yeah, active. Okay, okay. Now, 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 I, I think you said, you've said this before, please, 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 and you're saying it again. You seem to suggest that these are sentiments that we have on the National Assembly. Other issues. I'll come to you, Other matters for the president. Yes. I mean, for the senators, there are many things they can do in total. But you agree that but you are but you are agree but you agree that the seemingly quarrel that they have that is some areas only started from the leadership only in some areas where they are made to be informed and they confirm if they don't confirm the president has the final say as for the bills in question they are supposed to have the final say if they can get to third majority there are many other areas as I've listed with the uh, Senate can start and end. If they refuse to clear a ministerial nominee, it will not be coming. Thank you. I'll come back to you, Adam Saliu, but I want to get the reaction of uh, episode well, of people. Well, I would say that, first of all, even the president didn't even help the Eighth Assembly. If you are saying that the Eighth Assembly, they were not in agreement with the president, yeah. the president never did anything to help the Eighth Assembly. Because if now you sent uh, Magus Ney to, to, to uh, the National Assembly yeah. for, to yeah. send it for clearance, yeah. and they rejected him four times, yeah. yet you refuse to, to change him. Yeah. What are you telling Nigeria? You are not telling yeah. us that among the over 170 million Nigerians, we don't have any other person mm -hmm. to head the articulation. The Constitution does not say it's, 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 it's wrong. wrong. If you say, it's okay, now, if, 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 if you send ministers to the Senate uh -huh. and, and they refuse to confirm, put them on a, uh, 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 why do you change them? You you change them. Why, 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 why do you obey the Senate? Why have you refused to obey the Senate in the issue of Magus matter? Why did you refuse to obey the issue are in that <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. The president is not because the president is not sending a message. He's not sending a, a good message to other arms of government. Thank you. Look thank at you. what is happening in Kogi State now. Kogi State governor has just removed the CJ of Kogi State. Do you know why? Because he has already looked at what the president did to America, the, the CJ. You understand? He has looked at it. He has looked at it. Now, he's, he, he has taken on the so CJ. You understand? He will not say, ah, if the president... So he's having a contagious effect. Yes, yes, it will have. 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 I'll come back to you, Adam Salim. If the president, if the president, if the president respects Nigerians, if the president respects Nigerians, immediately the president, the Senate rejected Magu four mm -hmm. times. And not only that, what was uh, the Senate's, uh, 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 what was their reason for rejecting him? DSS, another federal government agency, was the one that wrote the Senate that don't confirm this man. He has issues. You understand? The Senate did not just wake up to say, we are not confirming Magu. Mm -hmm. They were acting on the petition mm -hmm. against Magu. Uh, but maybe the president said that the petition was not strong enough. Oh, they are yeah, yeah, yeah. in a position to, to oh, say it wasn't strong enough. Okay, well, well that's not the problem we are looking at. Thank you, thank you. Why not change it? No, you didn't do that. Thank you, Mr. Lee. for that state are not behaving the way the president said. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I only said you should react briefly. Thank you. I'll come back to you, Mr. Lee, once again, please. Okay. Let me take your time and put it in my pocket for now. <laughs> and I'm going to pay you a hundredfold. All right. Okay, now, Adam Salim, let's look at this whole aspect totally. Uh, leaving the whole issue of the override of the president's veto, uh, let's look at the issues of insecurity, which is biting hard on northwest states of the country, basically Katsina, Zamfara. And uh, now, now, the president gave his marching order to security chiefs that they should at all means get the bandits. Cattle rustlers, kidnappers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, there's an operation Pofada that has been put in place. Uh, do you see all of this as really checking the menace? Very well. Because oh. the Constitution provides in Section 14, oh. Sub 2, that security and welfare are the paramount aims of government. Thank so, any government that you. cannot guarantee security is not fit to be government. And the, the executive, Nigerian, the president, they are aware of it. That's why it is in tandem with 14 sub 2. And now, who are more capable? It's easier to criticize. The service chiefs, many of them are regular combatant soldiers, chief of Navy staff, Air Force staff, defense staff, and army staff. They are fit and proper people. They have the paraphernalia. It is the only decision. Now the president, in giving that material, is acting as the commander-in-chief 
of the armed office. If he declares a war, let it be. So now that he has given marching orders, we should just wait. Videlus and credulus. See, is believing. Let's give them some time. I know that the security agents are aware that people are not sleeping with their with one eye closed. Some say that their two eyes are open. They don't sleep anymore. Larry said that when I had it, when I had it in my house, over armed robbery attacks. Okay. You know, <laughs> it, it has been difficult for me to sleep with one eye. So, so my, my two eyes are open. The commander in chief has given a word which will, which will not be prejudicial. Yes, yes. The, 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 the aspect, yes. speculating, yes. anticipating. Let us allow the uh, service team to execute now, the president of us. And this security menace will become a thing of the past. Thank Time you. will tell. Thank you. Well, I'm coming back to you, Osage Godson, but uh, the numbers you can call, I, I, I want to ensure that it's written on the screen. I want to have an overriding influence on that screen. 052-290573. 052-290573 is the number. So listeners on independent radio, please be civil with your presentation as you pull a call through to us. And also our distinguished viewers, it's expected that you uh, pull a call through to us on the numbers written on the screen. 0522905073. Osage got sent. We had these reactions, and I, I, I know you also had yours yeah, over yeah. the aspect of the president's veto. I want your reactions on that and quickly on insecurity issues uh, in the me, northwest me, states of the country. Let me quickly say that when we talk about the issue of Nigeria, we must not try to become economical with the truth. This country is not. Take it on me. No, 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 we just start hearing marching orders. Yeah, we'll right that. from good luck, Jonathan. Time, we'll we not be hearing marching orders. Have we we'll not been told that Boko Haram will be technically defeated? Yes. Today is it better? But not only in the northeast. Look at the escalated rate of crime. But are you looking at the are you looking at the mass listen, listen, capacity of Nigeria as a country? Yes. Yes. Are you looking at the states responsible? Are, are you looking at the attitudes of people that even when you as a leader you are tying others are losing? Presently, Boko Haram find villages. Yes. They find villages. The what? They find villages, fine, as in you have to give us some okay. so that we attack you or we say, you know, what are we talking about? Well, we don't have that, saying. we don't have so that fact. The is on uh, net, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. newspapers. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that you are saying you are fighting for a cause, and the cause you are fighting for is getting worse. But your own bank account is getting better. Okay. Any indictment against you is not considered. Yeah. It's not constitutional. It's illegal. Any legal proceeding that does not favor you is questionable. You have reasons and explanations to it. Then you want me to believe that the system is working. We have to tell ourselves the truth because currently Nigeria has the worst case scenario in that of school children. Then you want to tell me education is working. Over 30 million in the whole world. Now, what do we have to do about light? At the time, it was three, three hours rational. Right, now, it's not right, two hours. Right. If you even see the two right, hours, you should right. be grateful to your God. Yes. What are you talking about? Is it no, 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 you can't generalize. You can't it's generalize. In some, in, some, in, some, in some areas, no, no, no. no, no, no. See, in, some, in some areas, yeah. you, you, you can boast of even 10 hours a day. Yeah. And even more than that. So, 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 I think, Philip, I think, which areas? I, I, think, I, think, I think there are, there are, there are challenges, but it's not enough for us to generalize that the country is not working. Yes, yes. I agree with you on that. It's not good to generalize because uh, fallacy of generalization is actually not the true position of okay. As so a custodian. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the issue is that, is that why, why discriminate? Why must some areas have 10 hours flight and some don't even have up to one hour? Or okay, hold. Okay, hold. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hold. Uh, finish your let point. Me land. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me say that, uh, with all due respect to this government, I don't think this government is setting good precedents when, when it comes to constitutional and legal issues. There have been all kind of indictments. I may not be a lawyer. It's one thing. It's one thing to. Lawyer, it's one. It's one thing to point out the faults. Let's look at the look solutions. At the now the aspect of Zamfara. The aspect of Zamfara. No, no. Let's look. Let's at look at the solutions. I'm surprised our other that uh, lawyer is even giving credence to the Mabu case. You know, if that continues in other states, now what you are teaching me now? 
for example, I'm a state governor, is that if I send my commissioner list to the House of Assembly and they don't assent to it, I will put them on all active yes. for my four years. Yes. You know, we just try to model up everything because maybe we have a political affiliation or we have some kind of sentiment. We must call a spade a spade. This and um, this is not the first, second, third, fourth time. So okay, the, thank you. The, you still have the floor, land, Sarah land. Land. You will land, okay. please. Just <laughs> keep that. Don't forget okay. it. You will land. But we have a caller. Uh, tell us your name and location, and contribute. Good morning. Good morning. What's yeah, your name, please? Uh, greet all of you there. I think the problem we have in Nigeria is that we are we seem to be sometimes self-centered. We talk of uh, political uh, sentiment. We talk of tribal sentiment. And so on and so forth. Why not we talk of Nigeria as a nation? Let us really talk of Nigeria. Nigeria is our friend. The idea of saying that uh, because somebody belongs to a political party and that it is that party that will now determine what the person will say on parliament, it is very, very wrong. It is bringing us down the drain politically, economically, and otherwise. Like uh, what, what, what we said to the uh, Mr. President. Concerning our budget, the problem we have with our budget is the fact that it's always uh, presented late and it's not uh, carried out earlier, no. And this uh, national assembly, the national assembly now, presented a bill to the Mr. President. Let this thing be, 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 be done in a way that the bill will be uh, sent to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, the national assembly for them to go through them and then pass it into law. So that by January, the beginning of the year, they will start implementation. The Mr. President has refused to sign it. And who on earth will accept what Mr. President has done? So for goodness sake, let's forget the political uh, sentiment. Let the Eighth Assembly please veto that bill. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, he is really reacting over the issues about uh, the need for us to live above sentiments yeah. and uh, the whole aspect of the fiscal year or the annual budget estimates. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think, the, I think the constitutional lawyer is saying that you are getting it wrong. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But I want you to react to that, Adam Zaliu. The Senate has the prerogative yeah. of approving ministerial nominees. If they reject a ministerial nominee, the president will drop that candidate. The Senate has the power, on in that power, of ambassadorial nominees too. If they reject uh, Mr. A from being sent to Hungary as ambassador, if they get so, there are areas in the Constitution yes. that the Senate have on either affair to which can be targeted. Uh, I, so there is some other areas if they put their negativity into it, I think, I think, can use thank you, thank you. I think, I think the caller reacted to that aspect where you said that they are only to get information no, and well, in confirm. Some cases, uh, but, but so outside, outside other that oversight that functions. Other things, thank you. Can start thank you. Implement. Thank you. I still know that Osage Goldstein still, <laughs> Osage Goldstein still oh, have yeah, the floor. Yeah. I, 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 I know that. But quickly, let's get another caller. Tell us your name and location, and contribute. Good morning, Mr. Patrick from Benin. I want to react on the issue of uh, uh, giving a uh, uh, command or instruction to the public chief of security. You don't wait on the killing before you are instructing the public chief to go ahead. Uh, in our point that the president took an oath as the commander in chief, from that moment, every public chief is under his command. I will do not wait to be put with one eye or two eyes open before he gives instruction. Okay, now uh, back to you, uh, Sergei so Godsend, as we round off. Uh, let, me, let me quickly say that uh, the government of the day must be more proactive. That is one thing I'm saying. Because when you, for me, uh, part of what we experience in this country, or part of what we are seeing in this country, is the failure of leadership. And by leadership failure, I'm not only referring to a particular section of the country or the yeah. state. You know, there is a general failure of leadership. And to rise above board, and what should be done? Uh, to rise, we, we need to see more proactiveness. We okay. need to see a government that understands the need and the situation at hand. 
and match ways with action. So you seem to suggest that this, this present government does not understand that. I, 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 from all indications and what is happening, okay, that uh, is as a round of let your, your opinion on security. Okay. Yes. Part of the things I think we should be uh, we should begin to ask is yeah. what is happening with the so much billions that have been allotted on security, and we must not take for granted what the governor of Zamfara said on the visits to the bandits, and what the governor of Bonu State have been saying over the years. You know, we, we must be more proactive. I, it still bothers me up to date. We are still talking about crude uh, weaponry. You know, insufficient weaponry for the military. Despite okay, thank you. the money that have been allotted from good luck time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's so look at your, uh, let's, result, not just let's look at your reaction over there, the security issues. I, I know uh, it's been up, like some will say, well, well, the, uh, but the, is that your opinion? The, I, I feel that the government needs to up its game. You understand? Now that uh, is the game not up yet. Uh, well, well, it's not up yet. <laughs> <long. laughs> but why would I say have these issues? It's worse because than... since the man entered there as president, <laughs> one of his cardinal points <laughs> during the 2015 election was to fight insecurity. Yes. And uh, he has been there for the past four years. Now he has got to a second term. I feel that he should be more proactive, like he has just said. He should be more proactive. Now, if uh, the service chiefs, why will it still be keeping the service chiefs if the security uh, situation is not improved? So there should be changes yeah, in the security should, architecture. Yeah, they should change them. So that let's let him try other hands to see if there will be an improvement. Thank you. Then on the issue of uh, Zamfara, we know there will be killings there, here mm -hmm. and there. Over, they said they discovered gold there, and they are mining gold and all that. I'm even surprised that individuals are mining gold. Because individuals are not uh, drilling our oil in the Niger Delta. <laughs> so why would an individual now take over the gold fees in Zafara? The gold is supposed to be for everybody. They are supposed to bring it to the table. So that it will also be shared. Yeah, just like the way... Well, the president has given his order for them to vacate the yes, mining site. No, not, and they are doing that. Just to that's give that order. It, it should be taken uh, over. That gold, that gold should be taken over for the interest of Nigerians. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think you've done much. You've done much. Thank you. You've done much. Thank you. A sentence from you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. A sentence from you, Adam Saliu, as we round off. As for the security of the country, the president knows as per session 305, he has the power to declare a state of emergency if lives, properties have become insecure, if part of the country is at war, etc. It has not reached that estate. Otherwise, the former president of Basanjo, he declared state of emergency. Mm. That, that, that is just another place. Mm. So with second mandate being renewed, we hope the president we take Nigeria to the next level. Thank you. Thank you, Osage Godsend. I must say thank you for pulling through Pleasure. on the show. Thank you. And of course, uh, to you, Ebu Selo Kifo, big thanks for being here. And your warm uh, presence, Adam Saliu, is unquantifiable. Thank you. Big thanks to you, listeners on Independent Radio and our distinguished viewers on Independent Television. Thumbs up. Well, this will call it a wrap on the program Politics Today. We'll do this again same time next week. And uh, we will be giving you more topics uh, that will whet your appetite in order for us to take the polity to a better level. I'm Philip Omo Gupo, and I'm saying goodbye and have a lovely day.